Hello. Welcome to the video. In this section, we're looking at um, uh, lesson 3.6, uh, where we're going to be looking at quadratic inequalities. So being able to solve a quadratic inequality is very, very similar to solving a linear inequality. Uh, the first thing you have to be able to identify is, is your graph going to be um, a dashed line or a solid line? So, like, if you look at uh, problems one, two, and three, those are all going to be dashed lines. Because dashed lines are represented by anything that's either greater than or less than. Number three is going to be a solid line because it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. The other thing that inequalities have, whether it's quadratic or linear, whatever it is, there is going to be some shading involved. So like, get our graph. Let's say we just look at, let's say we look at number one, for instance. So uh, here, this is going to be negative y is less than negative x plus 5. I got to get, divide this by negative 1. So now this is going to be y. Now this is going to now be greater than positive x minus 5. So everything that a linear equation that we've learned uh, still holds true. So my y-intercept is negative 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So it's right there. My slope is 1, so it goes here. But this is where, you know, it's a dashed line because it's greater than. All right, now there's some shading involved. Well, you got to pick a test point, right? The easiest one is 0, 0. You know, 0 is greater than 0 minus 5. Is 0 greater than negative 5? The answer is yes. So since I can say yes, my shading goes with the test point. If it said no, it would go away from the test point, just, you know, like we've used in uh, other uh, inequality problems that we've looked at in the past. So... Those same ideas are going to be used today when we're looking at quadratics. All right, so, you know, we're going to try to, you know, graph our quadratic just like we did with the equation. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. You know, let's find the Y-intercept. Let's find the vertex, axis of symmetry, all those things. But, again, after that, there is going to be some... Um, shading involved to figure out which regions hold true okay just like what we did with the linear so if we look here it says they want us to graph y is less than negative x squared minus 2x minus 1 so we're going to use all of our resources here so like let's say we got our graph we'll put that over here and in this case a is negative 1, B is negative 2, C is negative 1, all right? Looking at my y-intercept, it's coming from 0, comma C, so it's 0, comma negative 1. So I plot that point right there. My axis of symmetry is going to be X equals negative B, so positive 2 divided by 2 times A, which is negative 2. So this is going to turn out to be negative 1. So my axis of symmetry is right here. My vertex comes from uh, the x value comes from the axis of symmetry to find y. We plug this into the original value. So negative 1 squared is 1, but because it's negative, we got negative 1. Uh, so this is going to be plus 2 minus 1. So when I add all these up, I get 0. So negative 1 comma 0 is right here. All right, I have all the information now that I need to graph this parabola. Because A is negative, it's an upside down V shape, so it looks like it's going to look something kind of like this. And it's a dashed graph because it's less than. All right, I can use 
0 comma 0 is my test point to see where my shading is going to go. So basically what it's going to be is, is 0 less than, this is going to be 0 minus 0 minus 1. All right. Does, is 0 less than negative 1? Uh, no, that is not true. So that means that I shade everywhere that is on the out, you know, outside. So this is of my test point. So this is the shaded portion of my quadratic inequality. You are also going to be asked to graph a uh, quadratic system, all right? which means that uh, there is going to be like a final shading where uh, the final shading is where the shading overlaps and it holds true for both um, both inequalities. So looking at this, so if I get my graph out, looking at uh, the first one, the first one here, there's not a ton of work that needs to be done to graph it because there is no value for B because I know my axis of symmetry and my vertex is going to be on the Y axis. I know that my Y intercept is at positive three, one, two, three. This is not only just my Y intercept, but it's also my vertex. Okay. So now uh, because A is negative and this is going to be a, so I know that my graph is going to look something like this. Now, if I use my test point of 0, 0, and I go over here, is 0 less than, looks like 0 plus 3. Is that true? The answer is yes. So if it was just this, I would shade inside this parabola. But because we have more, uh, more to work with, more, we have to figure out the, the other one. So now I'm going to look at this inequality. This inequality has um, A being 1, B is 2, and C is negative 3. So my y-intercept is at 0, negative 3. So I'll put that in. 1, 2, negative 3. Plot the point. My axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative B. So it's negative 2 divided by... 2 times 1, so that's negative 1. So it's right along this line here. Uh, my vertex, um, my x coordinate is negative 1. My y coordinate is going to come from uh, negative 1 squared, which is 1. First, putting it back into the equation, it's going to be minus 2, minus 3. So 1 minus 2 minus 3. So that's 1 minus 2 minus 3 is negative 4. So find where that is, one, two, three, negative four. So, and because it's um, greater than or equal to, this is gonna be a solid line here. All right, and so now I'm still gonna use zero, zero as my test point because it's not on the boundary line. So I go over here, is zero greater than or equal to, looks like negative three, is that true? The answer is yes. So that means it's then going to be the inside. So my final shading is going to be what overlaps both uh, inequality one and inequality two. And that is going to be this portion right here because it holds true for both. A lot of people uh, use uh, different colors. That's why I use different colors here. Some people use colored pencils during uh, lessons like these, especially when you, there's a lot of different shading going on and you're trying to figure out uh, which one is your final shading. But keep in mind, if you're going to do that, make sure that your final shading is your darkest shading. Okay. And then here, It's asking us to uh, solve this algebraically. So you're just going to solve it just like you did with the equations. Make sure that your uh, inequality is set equal to 0. And then you may have to uh, factor it or use quadratic formula or whatever um, means necessary in order for you to solve it. So what you're going to do is essentially you are going to pretend 
like it is an equation. So you're just going to pretend like, oh, it's x squared minus 3x minus 4 is set equal to 0. And then you're going to go about it just like you've done before. All right. So I'm going to attempt to factor this. I believe you can factor this. So different signs, large numbers attached to the minus, two values that um, fall between, uh, that are giving me a product of four, but their difference is three, would be four and one, all right? So uh, zero product property tells me that X is gonna be equal to negative one and X is gonna be equal to four, okay? That's when it is an equation, all right? But, what we used was it was dealing with um, was dealing with less than. So what we're going to uh, keep in mind is now x is going to be our value. But what we're going to do now is because it's less than zero, so we're going to write in less than here and less than here, and it's going to be our value of x must fall between negative 1 and 4, which comes from here and here. So this is going to be our inequality solution with respect uh, to the, those values of x. And that is uh, being able to look at quadratic inequalities. I hope this helps. Until next time.